Hello and welcome to my test world. I'm Mulrat28 and this is my developer environment for Unwired. Uh, Unwired is a mod that I've been working on for uh, quite a bit now actually to be honest. Uh, the original idea planning for this I started about January of uh, 2019. Uh, we're almost at the end of 2019. And the concepts that I was thinking of, I had actually already been using for a previous mod, the mod called Rewired, which was an add-on to robotic parts, which was itself a continuation of Wired, which was an add-on to Cyberware. You can probably see where this is going. Um, so the third installation in this sequence is Unwired, which doesn't require Cyberware or robotic parts. Uh, partly this is because those mods don't exist for 114.4, which is what I've been working against. Uh, the other reason was because I wanted to make a bunch of um, sci-fi slash techy kind of stuff, cyberpunky kind of things, and I didn't want it to be limited to whomever wanted to play with cyberware. I wanted people to be able to play my mod if they liked my mod. I wanted to be able to play my mod if I didn't want to have cyberware. Uh, if those mods ever exist, I will add support for them again in a heartbeat because I love those mods but I understand they're not everybody's cup of tea and it was too much of a pain in the butt for a 112.2 to split an existing mod into two mods to maintain adding new stuff for so it was just easier to set my sights for the new version which is what we've done uh, that said most of the modding experience I have has tended to be adding on to existing stuff or tweaking existing things rather than just making wholesale new items. So this has been a bit of a learning experience for me, so it's been pretty interesting. It's been fun and frustrating at both times. It's a weird feeling. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, open up JEI real quick. So in terms of what I have in the mod right now, it's actually a very, very small mod. Um, the entry point to it is finding gray goo in the world, killing them, and getting their drops. Uh, the Grey Goo are slime-like creatures. They're basically uh, nanite swarms. <laughs> They're these guys. Oh. They do attack. Go away. Please go away. This is my fault for summoning him. Alright, so the little guys aren't so bad. They do damage, but not as much. Anyway, they drop this inert gray goo. Uh, this is actually a slime ball. You can use it in any recipe that uses forged slime balls. Um, I actually had to re-add the recipe for the sticky piston that actually got removed. However, I really like the idea of being able to use generic slime balls for sticky pistons. Um, I don't remember adding it for the magma cream because I think that should actually be... That might be somebody else that did that, that our forge finally re-added it. Uh, but Using the gray goo, you can make more gray goo using nuggets. This is a temporary recipe until I get a machine that can actually make them instead of crafting it manually. Uh, it's basically a stopgap. It is a better than nothing situation. Uh, you can activate the gray goo by combining it with nuggets and redstone. And then they can be used to make leads or the uh, biopolymer cell, which is just a battery. It's got a little red button there. That button is actually important. Um, so, fairly simple stuff. You uh, take the inert goo and you make the active goo. So the active goo is what you use to make plastic. Uh, to do that, you just go ahead, right click the active goo on a tree, specifically any log. It'll work on a log like this. It'll just give you some polymer ingots. It'll also work on a... Uh, Let's see, I think you can do it with any axe. Is it right click? It'll work on the stripped ones as well. They're all logs, they all count. Uh, you can also place the log and do it that way. Um, I had been considering doing something kind of like the way that um, silkworms work in uh, Ex Nilo, where you just click it on the tree and it like slowly consumes it. Uh, the other option I was thinking of, which is probably going to happen, is that instead of making the ingots, this makes the plastic, the polymer dust that you then make into an ingot. Yeah, it's fairly simple though, it works fairly well. I want to expand the uses for this, but I also want to make it look better because right now, while it does work, it's not pretty. 
That is a thing that I'm unfortunately probably going to be saying quite often. Uh, let's see. So let's go ahead and filter this back to unwired. No, no. Stop. Stop. I'm, I'm clicking. Oh, that is the worst. All right, so we have plexiglass and we have smart glass. Uh, the smart glass is a reused item. This is the old EC glass or the electrochromic glass. You apply a redstone signal to it and then it basically goes... I forgot about that. Apply a redstone signal and it basically goes black. Uh, at that point, it does not let light through. It is just a way that you can make a window that you can turn off. It's pretty neat. The plexiglass is a glass block that you can harvest and you don't need silk touch to pick back up. Uh, these two probably need new tech, new sounds, excuse me, because the, uh, the glass breaking doesn't sound quite right. Um, one of the shulker sounds does sound kind of plasticky. It would probably work really well. But other than that, they, uh, they're fairly simple. They work as expected. Unfortunately, connected textures is not a thing right now, the connected texture mod. So if you have multiple of these guys, they have this line along the edge. I could fix that by getting rid of this edge here. But without that, it looks kind of... Um, it's hard to look at now. It's harder to look at without. It's kind of weird to, to explain. Uh, I do add a soy crop. It's my single crop that I add to the game. Uh, it is used to make food. Uh, you can use it to craft a protein resequencer, but using the resequencer, you can use it to make meat. You can also use the resequencer to turn rotten flesh into meat. Uh, this supports loading recipes by JSON, so other mods could add support if they would like. Um, I'm actually considering rewriting the recipe thing so that I can preload some recipes on my own end and only load them if the requisite mod is actually present. Um, I don't want to forcibly opt other mods in to accepting me letting people get their meat, though. That's a phrase I didn't think I'd utter today. Um, but anyway, I really like it. It is a vertical half slab. And the uh, way that it was used was based on the stone cutter from Vanilla. So you just put in your stuff, you select the material, and then you get out synthetic raw chicken. The uh, really cool thing about this chicken is that that is actually regular vanilla Minecraft chicken. That is Minecraft chicken. Uh, the renaming and stuff is handled by NBT. So anything that uses regular chicken can use this chicken. It just, see, raw chicken makes cooked chicken. Um, I was considering keeping it so that if you craft anything using this chicken, that it will have the made from soybeans or made from rotten flesh tag just to differentiate what it is. But I don't want to clog up people's inventories with too many different items. And being able to reuse chicken this way just seemed an easier option. You don't have to assume people are going to properly use forge, use the um, forge tags. It's using Minecraft tags to be able to uh, do the recipes and stuff. There are a bunch of forged defaults, which people are slowly adapting to, but that's another story. Uh, let's see, we have polymer frame. That is just a crafting item as well as a decoration item. Give me a stack. There we go. It's just basically used for machine blocks. Uh, there's also the polymer block, which is made out of the uh, polymer ingots. It's just generic storage block. They take a pickaxe to uh, pick up. I don't know if it's set to require a uh, tool, though. I think it might be. All right, so get rid of those guys. We've covered that. So that leaves the rebreather, the targeting visor, the flippers, and the moon boots. So these are equipment items. The uh, targeting visor is just a helmet. It gives a little bit of armor. You get a little fancy look. And when you, it is equipped, you gain a little bit of armor and your ranged attacks do more damage. Fairly simple. 
Uh, as an added bonus, you can recolor it with dye. And then that way I have a red one. Though I think I would probably go for uh, purple. Yeah, I'd go for purple. Uh, probably could turn the alpha down on that a little bit. Well, actually, technically alpha up on it a little bit. Uh, but it works as expected. It cut dyes both the item that you wear as well as the item in your inventory. The uh, flippers functions basically the same way. When you wear them, you swim faster. The model is not amazing. <laughs> Um, however, you can recolor them. They're just a regular solid plastic, solid single color thing of plastic. They are basic. The rebreather is kind of cool. You get this little thing on your face. When you're in water and you run out of oxygen, it will refill your oxygen at the cost of durability. Um, once you get out of oxygen for a little bit, it'll slowly recharge back up. So it'll last indefinitely currently. Um, all of these items, especially the rebreather and the turning visor, are going to be changed at one point so that they are augmentable. You could add like armor plates and stuff to it, but right now they're just regular one-off gadgets. I might actually make separate versions that are upgradable and make these as like say a curio or something. Anyway, as you saw there, it took the oxygen going down. As soon as it hit zero, it refreshed it and did a little bit of damage. Do it one more time. Yep, okay. And then this is at 141 out of 143. And then when we get out of water, it should go ahead and repair itself. Yep, there we go. It does roughly um, two, damage, two damage a second. It'll repair. So if you dig it all the way down, you need to be out of water for a little bit for it to repair itself. Probably only about a minute. Minute 15. It's not going to take too long to repair. All right, so we got those guys. Uh, that just leaves us markers, metabolic generators, and polymer crates, plus the bio cell that I mentioned. The uh, goo, the nano fluid buckets, that's currently that currently does not have a use. It is a future project. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the metabolic generator. This is the first quote unquote machine that I have made, and it is just a simple power generator. Uh, what it does is rather than start, well, let me backtrack, rather than start off with a tech mod that starts off with you making a yet another coal burning machine to power stuff, I wanted something a little different. So this runs off of food. Uh, it makes 40 Fe per tick. The quality of the food will determine how long it runs. It's not a lot of power. I, For my mod, you won't need a lot of power. So it's just basically a bootstrapping type thing. Uh, there will be one other generator and it will make a bit more power. However, I don't have it in yet and I'm not really in a rush to make it as I don't need it currently. Uh, I might be open to making the power generation configurable, but I mean, otherwise you just input, insert food, get power. Uh, what I do need to do is add a progress bar here so you can see what it's doing and preferably some sort of audio feedback because it's quiet. The um, biopolymer cell here, though, can be charged using the charge slot. Anything that works off of forge energy can be charged from that slot. Um, as this biopolymer cell charges, you'll notice the color is changing. It's shifting from red to yellow, and then when it gets all the way full, it will uh, go green. You can actually just burn the soybeans directly, too. It's going pretty good. Really, I'm... I know how to handle this. I'm just standing still and they spawn right on top of me. Yeah, E. Type is not equal to player. Suck it. I win. <laughs> Alright, so it's fully charged and now the battery is green. Um, I have done testing with this. It works with most other machines that use Forge Energy. It works fine. Um, in an effort to not make this too stupid, it actually caches the blocks around it, and it only um, 
rechecks every couple of ticks for additional stuff to send to. So if you put a block down and it doesn't immediately see it, just give it a sec. I don't want to kill servers. Um, the other item we have here is a polymer crate. And what this is, is my chest replacement. You can just put stuff in it. Works as expected when you're using the one probe, you can sneak in and see what's inside of it. Uh, this does have some other utility that a chest does not. It has nine extra slots over a regular chest. Uh, there will be two other two other forms of crates. Each crate is going to add another row. So the all said, the last tier is going to have six rows of nine slots. So 54 per chest. It does not compare really to iron chests. It is a lot less storage. However, I feel this brings some other utility that iron chest does not that more than makes up for the lack of space. Uh, namely, these guys are, honestly, they're probably the best thing that I've made in here so far, and they're just storage, but you can recolor the lids if you want to make them color coordinated, see where they go. The uh, pick block even properly updates. I've, I'm sad to admit how long it took me to get that right. But the even better part is that if you have a marker like I have in my hand right here, this black marker specifically, you can sneak right click and label them. Yeah, miss hunk. No, mis miscellaneous junk. And it just goes right on the very front of the crate. So that you can label stuff without having to make signs. And you can sneak right click and just edit it again. So it's no longer junk. Even better to this is that these markers are fairly easy to make. They just take a feather, a plastic sheet, and a die. You could replace that die with any other die and get a marker of that color. So for example, if we want a nice, say, bright red marker, let's go ahead and just give it to us right now. No, that's black, that's red. So we have a red marker. So if we right click, that changes the text color and it changes the color that it renders on the crate. Works great, fairly simple. There's more. If we were to give ourselves a sign, let's get a, a nice dark one, dark oak sign. Let's see, uh, don't touch the crate. <laughs> you get dark colored text on a dark sign. Can't really read it that well, can you? Uh, unfortunately, the red's not really gonna help so much in this because that is a rather dull red once it actually gets rendered. But what you could do is get a yellow marker. And that will stand out much better. So it's uh, definitely lets you get a little bit more creative in terms of like labeling and putting stuff away. I like it. <laughs> I really do. Um, but for right now, that's pretty much all that I have going. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave a comment below. Um, I've got some more ideas to work on. My next task is to actually get my uh, first two machines that do stuff as opposed to make power set up. The uh, first one is going to be a goo crash, which makes the goo that you use rather than having to hunt slimes. And the other one after that is a polymerizer, which makes plastic out of natural stuff like leaves and uh, clippings and stuff like that. I also see a set of safety scissors in my future. <laughs> uh, anyway, see you all later. Have a good night.